Karth the Lion is an amazing Super Friends commander from Modern Horizons 2. It is 2 black green for 3-5 legendary creature human warrior. When it enters the battlefield or a planeswalker you control dies, look at the top 7 cards of your library. You may reveal a planeswalker card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So when you first play Karth you'll find a planeswalker which you can start messing with. The other important part about the Karth ability is that whenever a planeswalker you control dies you can look at the top seven cards. This means that if our opponents attack our planeswalkers or if we just ultimate them we will get another to replace them. And since we have exactly 20 planeswalkers we can calculate the odds that revealing seven will find us one. As you can see it's a 78% chance and this is going to happen every single time one of our planeswalkers dies. The second ability is just as good. Planeswalkers loyalty abilities you activate cost an additional plus one to activate. This is huge and allows you to ultimate your planeswalkers so, so much more easily than you usually would be able to. We have two planeswalkers which can ultimate the turn we cast them. You can think of these as sorceries which have the ultimate ability. Sometimes you will choose other things and that's a good option to have, but a large amount of the time you'll just ultimate them the turn you play it. So Garruk, Cursed Huntsman, is four black green for a five loyalty Garruk. It has zero, create two, two, two black and green wolf creature tokens with whenever this creature dies, put a loyalty counter on each Garruk you control, but really that's a plus one ability. Negative three, destroy target creature, draw a card, and negative six, which we can ultimate the turn we cast it, you get an emblem with creatures you control get plus three, plus three, and have trample. While this deck doesn't focus on creatures very much, it is still an incredibly helpful ability to have. And we're running many planeswalkers, which will create tokens for us. Nissa Vital Force is five green green for a five loyalty Nissa plus one, untap target land you control. Until your next turn, it becomes a five five elemental creature with haste. It's still a land. Negative three, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. And negative six, you get an emblem with whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. For five mana, that emblem is amazing, especially considering how difficult it is to remove. Speaking of planeswalkers and ultimating our planeswalkers, we have the next turn ultimate category. The idea behind these is that if you plus them, next turn you will have enough loyalty to ultimate the planeswalker. We have 13 cards in this category with a wide range of abilities. From Ugin the Spirit Dragon, who can deal damage, wrath, or draw cards, gain life, and put permanent cards onto the battlefield, Vivian Raid, who can draw cards, destroy permanents, or pump our creatures. Soren Markov, who can deal damage, set people's life totals to 10, or control players' turns. And many, many more. These cards are incredibly powerful, and pulling off any of these ultimates gives you a very good chance of winning the game. But in case pulling off our ultimates once wasn't enough, we have the double ultimate category. This includes cards like Rings of Bright Hearth and Lithoform Engine. And we can use their abilities to either duplicate cards' abilities or our Planeswalker's ability. Since the loyalty change is a cost, it will not affect that, but you will get the ability twice. But what about protecting our planeswalkers? Planeswalkers are very common targets to attack since you get a lot of value out of killing them. So how are we going to prevent that? Well, there's many ways, one of which is the stop attackers category. This includes cards like Silent Arbiter, which allows only one creature to attack and one creature to block each combat, Vow of Torment and Wildness, which we can enchant to an opponent's large creature and force it to not attack us, or the blockers category, which will just give us blockers to, well, block the damage from our opponent's attackers. This includes planeswalkers that create tokens like Garrick, Garrick, and Garrick, creatures like Sakura Tribe Elder, or Steve, and Silent Arbiter, and other token generators like Oath of Liliana. We have ways to increase the number of counters on our planeswalkers with the more counters category. There's a wider range of ways we do this, from proliferate on Sword of Truth and Justice and Contagion Engine, additional loyalty abilities 
counties in the case of the Chain Veil, just adding loyalty counters in the case of the Elder Spell and Settle the Score, doubling counters in the case of Vorn Clex and Doubling Season, and adding one more counter whenever another counter would be placed in the case of Peer. All of these are incredibly helpful and will allow us to ultimate early. And if they don't, they will give our Planeswalkers more loyalty to survive and keep on activating. This deck also has an incredible amount of removal. This way we can get rid of our opponent's creatures that are threatening our Planeswalkers. This is anything from Wraths, like Navinural's Disc and Ugin the Spirit Dragon, to abilities on Planeswalkers like Obnixilis Reignited and Liliana of the Dark Realms, staples like Putrefy, Beast Within, and Nature's Claim, and many, many more. We have a couple pieces of protection, like Swiftfoot Boots and Lightning Greaves. Most of the time we want to keep Karth around for their ability. Voyager Staff is also good as we can flicker Karth. This means we can both get around removal and we can get Karth's ETB again. Kaya's Ghost Form will return a creature or planeswalker when it dies, so we can put it on Karth and get the ETB ability again, or we can put it on a planeswalker kill it, and use it again. Either way, it becomes incredibly powerful. Since us and our opponents will be constantly killing our planeswalkers, we have recursion. This includes Confront the Past, which is X in a black for sorcery, return target planeswalker card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, command the Dread Horde, which is four black black, choose any number of target creature or planeswalker cards in graveyards, command the Dread Horde deals damage to you, equal to the total converted mana cost of those cards. Put them on to the battlefield under your control. We can get every single planeswalker we've killed back and get a huge amount of value from it. Yawgmoth's Vile Offering will both destroy a creature and return one to the field. That is, as long as we have a legendary creature or planeswalker. Eternal Witness and Nissa Vital Force just let us get it back to our hand. For ramp, we mostly have staples, but we also have a Garuk Wild Speaker and Freya Lee Slanowar's Fury. For draw, we have a few staples like Read the Bone, Sign in Blood, Knight's Whisper and Harmonize, but we also have Reki, History of Kamigawa to draw off of our legendary spells, and Vivian Raid, Garuk, Obnixilis, Loth, and Karn to draw off of Planeswalker abilities. This deck is running 37 lands, including Command Beacon since we might need to recast our commander a lot, Karn's Bastion for Proliferate, Interplanar Beacon for Planeswalker Synergy, and some fixing like Temple of Malady, Yanawar Waste, Necroblossom Snarl, and Command Tower. Sadly, this deck isn't super budget. It's $550, but that's just the nature of Super Friends decks, and especially in Golgari. This deck is very hungry for Planeswalkers and wants to run a ton, and that just demands running an expensive card. The other downside to having so many Planeswalkers is the average CMC. It is horrible. 3.5 Five, nine. But the fact of the matter is, all the planeswalkers that are playable within the colors cost a lot of mana. The less planeswalkers we run, the more likely we are to whiff off of Karth's ability. And consistently hitting that is important. So I just have to live with a sad average CMC. At least we have a good amount of ramp. I feel like this deck would fall squarely into mid power. I just love the design of Karth. And it matches the weaknesses of planeswalkers so perfectly. It's difficult to get to the ultimate? Well, why don't we make it easier? Oh, there's not enough good planeswalkers or oh, your planeswalkers keep dying? Well, why don't we make it so that when they die, you get more. A part of me wishes it was in more colors and a part of me doesn't. I definitely like the restriction and the stringent nature of building an only Golgari, but it really does limit you. The number of good planeswalkers you can run on a low CMC just isn't enough. And you end up with either not very many planeswalkers, a bad curve, or both. Which is just sad.